Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all grace to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, all grace to Srila Prabhupada. Um, thank you for joining. Today, Guru Maharaj will continue uh, with the topic, uh, the process of devotional service. And um, today's verse was uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhjalila, 22nd chapter and verse uh, 111. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, you can please Hare take Krishna that. Hare Krishna, we're basing seeds once you come back to this chapter, we're going to be able to Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Bukka Babu Padabhya Guru Shasya Sramai Saha Shatvaro Janji Varna Punar Vipadaya Pritak Translation from the mouth of Rama, the Brahminical order has come into existence. Suddenly from his arms, the Kshatriya has come. From his waist, the Vaishyas have come. And from his legs, the sutras have come. These four orders and their spiritual counterparts, Ramacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, and Sannyasa, combine to make human society. This first one twelve. The Asian Purusho Shakshad at the Prabhavam Ishvaram Nabajantiava Jananti Stanam Brasta Patantiada. If one simply maintains an official position, the four vanas and ashrams. And thus does not worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu. He falls down <clears throat> from his puffed up position into a hellish condition. So these two verses mm, illustrate the Varnashram system, Varnas and Ashram, the four Varnas and four Ashrams, which are the basic principle for social and spiritual organization in society. But then here, after stating them as the social foundation for development of society, without worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whatever position he maintains within these four ashramas and ashrams, he falls down. <laughs> verse 113 is a very significant verse and we'll be doing that today. <laughs> Svartavyam satatam vishnu svartatam yana jatu chit sarva vidi nisheda sur etayur eva kinkaraham. Translation Krishna is the origin of Vishnu. He should always be remembered and never forgotten at any time. All the rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastra should be servants of these two principles. I'll read it again. Try to hear this very carefully because it's foundational. Krishna is the origin of Vishnu. He should be remembered and never forgotten at any time. And then here is the reason. All the rules and regulations mentioned in the Shastras should be servants of these two principles. So this is from Padma Puranam. There's many regulative principles and directions given by the spirits and masters. And they act as servants of the big basic principle. What is that? One should always remember, never forget Krishna. This is possible one chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Therefore, one must strictly chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra 24 hours daily. So if anybody thinks I'm a fanatic, then you should read this verse here. And I look like a liberal compared to this statement here. 
Therefore, one should strictly chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra 24 hours daily. So how many of us are doing that? <laughs> okay. One may have other duties to perform on the direction of the spiritual master, but he must first abide by the spiritual master's order to chant a certain number of rounds. In our Krishna conscious movement, we have recommended the Nehavai chant at least 16 rounds. This chanting of 16 rounds is absolutely necessary if one wants to remember Krishna and not forget him. Of all the regulative principles, the spiritual master's order to chant at least 16 rounds is most essential. One may do other service, sell books and life members. These are not ordinary duties. They help us to remember Krishna. One can go out in Sankirtan and sell books. In this way, he is remembering Krishna. One goes to enlist life members, he remembers Krishna. Smartatam, Satatam, Vishnu, Vishtar, Marta, Vyana, Jatushit. The conclusion is that one must act in such a way, and here's the, here's the summation of the whole thing. The conclusion is that one must act in such a way that he will always remember Krishna, and one must refrain from doing, doing things that make him forget Krishna. These two principles form the basic background of Krishna consciousness. Namaste Saras Bhakti Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Near Visesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine. Hit your button once more so the translation goes up a little higher. You can see the whole purport and translation. Okay, I think we got it there. Stop right there. Oops, you went too far. No, that's good enough. That's that's fine. <clears throat> okay. Mm, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Varuna Tyananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Sivasa Vigor Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <clears throat> So sometimes people say well what is Krishna consciousness all about <clears throat> Well, the word itself is indicate conscious of Krishna. <laughs> Our whole business is to become conscious of Krishna. We are we are money conscious, we are girl conscious, we are boy conscious, we are <clears throat> um, what else conscious are we? <laughs> We're conscious of all of our family responsibilities. We're conscious to make sure that we are, you know, in good health. We're conscious of so many things, but here is this is Krishna consciousness. This this verse and this purport actually is coming from the from the Padma Purana as it's mentioned here. It's also mentioned in many other places such as you'll find it in the Mahabharata also. Uh, this verse and purport is fundamental. It's right to the point. Whatever you're doing, remember Krishna. And the foundation to establish remembering of Krishna is the spiritual master's most important order, chant at least 16 rounds on beads every day. Now, Prabhupada, as we mentioned earlier, he said one should chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra 24 hours daily. But then again, there's always this, you know, concern about other activities. When Srila Prabhupada started the movement, in the very beginning in New York, um, he had asked the devotees to chant 64 rounds every day 
on beads. It was discussion between, at that time, one very senior devotee. And this, the response was, we have so many things to develop, but how, how are we going to be able to chant 64 rounds? And then Prabhupada reduced it to 32. And then that was not acceptable by the devotees. There was no further discussion. And then finally Prabhupada said 16 and no less. So you see his original instruction was to chant 64 rounds. So what we have is 16 rounds is quite concessionary. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati made all of his disciples chant 64 rounds, except for those who were out all day doing preaching work. If they were out preaching, then they could chant 16 rounds. But if they were in the ashrams and doing other services outside of preaching, then they would have to chant 64 rounds. Mm -hmm. That was a rule. And Bhakti Siddhartha has made many statements to support his, his program. Srila Prabhupada has many, has, if you carefully read and hear from Srila Prabhupada, you'll, you'll see that although he is saying 16 rounds, he's asking us to chant always. And he's mentioned this hundreds of times in lectures. It's also written in his books. But one should constantly chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. When one chants 16 rounds every day as a fundamental principle, one will start to develop a natural desire to chant more. Um, and I use the word natural because as it's just confirmed by Vishwanar Chakravarti Thakur in one of his statements. He says, one who chants every day can come to the point of chanting always. <laughs> and that's the goal, to chant the Hare Krishna Mantra 24 hours. In other words, to always remember Krishna. So now we might say that even when one is doing other activities, one can also be chanting Hare Krishna. In Bengal, amongst the common people who are, what we say, religiously inclined, there is a Bengali statement, Hate Koro Kaje Muke Bolo Hori. Hate Koro Kaje Muke Bolo Hori. Now, if you have any Bengalis out there, they know what I'm saying. Hate Koro Kaji means work with your hands. Muke Bolo Hari, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> in other words, even in your ordinary duties, washing dishes, uh, um, uh, whatever you're doing, you can be chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. It will not interfere in fact, it'll even enhance the quality of your service. So chanting the Hare Krishna mantra in this age is recommended as a continuous practice and not something that is simply a, a feature of our devotional service. In fact, the whole program is to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> um, the idea is that to come to the chant, platform of chanting always. Prabhupada would say uh, 16 rounds on beads, innumerable, and he uses the word innumerable rounds off the beads. Mm -hmm. I have collected uh, a number of statements from both Srila Prabhupada's books, mostly from his books, emphasizing this point of chanting 24 hours a day. And Prabhupada actually confidentially revealed this to certain senior devotees that this is actually our movement <laughs> to always be chanting 24 hours a day. There is a little anecdotal story, which is actually a fact. 
where one, I don't think it was a disciple, but it was an, uh, somebody who was in the, uh, a friend of Srila Prabhupada or somebody who had met Prabhupada and they had developed a, a nice relationship. And the man said to Prabhupada, are you always chanting Hare Krishna? Prabhupada said, come and come behind me and put your ear against my backside. In other words, against my back. And the person did it and he could hear the holy name going on inside of Prabhupada's being. Um, this, is, this is a highly level development where even if one is consciously active outside, within their heart, the holy name is constantly going on. And this is a very advanced stage of spirituality, but it's possible for everyone to come to that stage of always chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Prabhupada would also say, um, when you're actually chanting Hare Krishna, you'll start to think, why 16 rounds? Why not 16,000 rounds? <laughs> that is a, a direct quote from his divine grace. So uh, the essence of our movement really is to come to the point of chanting more and more and more. Now devotees do have many services and Prabhupada speaks about that in relationship to here. But the easiest and most recommended way to remember Krishna is to chant Hare Krishna. But then Prabhupada gives the ultimate principle in the last statement, he said that the essence, and this is, this is also mentioned in Nectar Devotion, out of the 64 rules and regulations that are listed, there are 44 that are what do you call vidis, and there are 20 that are nishedas. For, uh, vidis means things to do, nishedas means things to avoid. So there are 64 regulative principles. And Prabhupada, it mentioned in the Nectar Devotion by Rupa Goswami that all the rules and all the regulations mentioned are subordinate. As it says here, all the rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastras should be servants of these two principles, to always remember Krishna and never forget him. <laughs> so if someone asks you, what is our movement about? We are Krishna conscious. We try to remember God always. <laughs> and the best and uh, most direct and highly recommended way is to chant his holy name. <laughs> And chanting can be done anytime, any place, anywhere. There is no rules, there's no regulations, there's no prohibitions. One can chant anytime. And that will make one Krishna conscious. Um, let's see, what was I going to say? I had a point. Well, uh, Uh, hmm. There was something I was going to say. Uh, let me think here. You get old, mind just mm, shuts down sometimes. <laughs> That's why we have to keep chanting Hare Krishna to keep it, keep it moving. <laughs> uh, let's see. All the rules and all the regulations. Yeah, are servants of these two principles. Um, and so that's some, that is the summation of all the principles in devotional service. So the idea is to come to that platform always remembering Krishna. There's a verse from the 
part of a verse from the uh, Upade, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Nectar Devotion. Yena kena pakarena mana krishna nive saya. Yena kena, well, uh, somehow or other, whatever you do, always remember Krishna. <laughs> Uh, that's the essence of the Shastric statements, one who can come to that class. So we have to, in order to remember Krishna, we have to practice to remember Krishna. So the practice is just as good as the uh, result of remembering Krishna, because in the practice you're remembering Krishna. You're training the mind also to become, to remember Krishna more and more. And so this direction in life is a success somehow. So when you see yourself not thinking of Krishna, then remember Krishna. You can immediately chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and as soon as you remember Krishna, you are connected to Krishna to the degree of the efficacy of that remembrance. In other words, even in the slight statement of Hare Krishna, you're connected. But if you're absorbed in Krishna, then that then you can feel the presence of Krishna through that absorption. <laughs> so all of these other duties that we perform are servants of these two principles to always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. Some people say, well, if this, if chanting Hare Krishna is all there is, why do we do so many other services? Why not just chant 24 hours a day? Yeah, if you can do that. But then again, Bhakti Siddhanta says, you know, he speaks one verse, Prabhupada repeats it, and some people will go to a secluded place and sit down and chant but they're not qualified to do that. Their minds are not able to do that. They do it as some kind of show. And they're also thinking of women and money in their so-called bhajan. <laughs> Bhakti Siddhanta calls it cheating. Uh, I forgot the exact verse. Uh, Kaitavo, um, um, maybe somebody remembers that verse. It's a very nice verse. I can't remember. Prabhupada would quote it often. So one cannot artificially jump to the stage of stopping all activities and sit, sitting down in some kind of secluded place and just chant. Your mind will go from here to there, remembering everything that Krishna. Uh, I need to, I'm getting an important call. I'm going to have to stop for a second. I'm going to have to take this call. I'll be right back. This is a call I've been waiting for. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Dr. Sukhan. Yeah. Um, can yeah. I, when can I come to see you? I'm
Guru Maharaj, you have to unmute Guru Maharaj. I muted you. See, I don't do that. But this one, if I didn't get it then, I would have not, probably would have never been able to get it. Okay, so, yeah, so we're getting to the essence of the whole process of Krishna consciousness. This verse is um, the Padma Purana, out of all of the Puranas, is the closest Purana to the Srimad Bhagavatam. It is, a, it is the Purana that is quoted most to support all statements in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Well, Srimad Bhagavatam is called Amalam Purana. It is that Purana that's above all of the Puranas. And it's called Paramahansa Samhita. It is the highest of all spiritual principles. And it gets support from statements from all of the other Puranas. And the most supportive of all the Bhagavatam statements are coming from Padma Purana. So that is, uh, Srila Prabhupada actually wanted to do translations and purports on Padma Purana, but he wasn't able to get to them. But that was his desire. He wanted to do Padma Purana. He wanted to do, I think, the Kano and Kata Upanishads also. Baba had a whole list of books that he wanted to, to uh to uh, translate and give purports on, but somehow or other he wasn't able to get to them. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, now I remember what I wanted to say. The reason why we somehow, we perform so many other activities in devotional service, again, the question comes, why not just chant? Well, because these other activities purify our consciousness where we can develop the ability or the spiritual acumen quality to chant more and more. So worshiping the deity, taking Krishna prasadam only, um, hearing and reading Srimad Bhagavatam, associating with devotees, all of these support and fuel the process of chanting Hare Krishna. So that's why we perform all of these other activities. But as one becomes more advanced, one will want to chant more and more and more and come to the stage of continuous chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And there was that one very dear God brother of Srila Prabhupada Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj, maybe you've heard of him. He was always chanting Hare Krishna. Prabhupada, when he would come to see Prabhupada sometimes, Prabhupada and him would sit and they would talk and they would laugh and they would just, you know, be slapping each other on the knees and, and having a very intimate, very affectionate relationship. Prabhupada really loved him. And his program was to chant. He was chanting 24 hours a day. He never stopped chanting. He would, if he wasn't doing japa, he was doing kirtan. If he wasn't doing kirtan, he was doing japa. <laughs> His samadhi mandir is in Vrindavan. He's a really wonderful. And recently, not too long ago, maybe about five years ago, a book was written about the life of Krishna Daska Babaji Maharaj. Uh, he was an example in our days of one who was chanting 24 hours a day. And there were many, of course, but he was known for his chanting. Okay, so um, I'll stop there and see if there's any questions and comments. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for a nice class. And thank you so much for reminding us again uh, about this, um, never forget Krishna, always remember Krishna. Thank you so much. I uh, think for Srimati, Srimati would re really like this class because I think that's what she wants to do, just to chant and remember Krishna all day. I don't think she wants to get involved with anything else. <laughs> so I was thinking this class is dedicated to you. <laughs> I don't know what you got that from where you got that impression, Guru Maharaj. I am still struggling to remember Krishna. 
um, even um, even though I'm engaged in a lot of things, uh, Krishna conscious activities, sometimes uh, I get distracted and uh, don't even remember Krishna. <laughs> I'm still trying, Guru Maharaj. But thank you so much for your encouraging words. Thank you. Thank you. Dear devotees, if you have any questions or comments uh, or realizations, please go ahead. Thank you. And please turn on your cameras. Uh, that would be very nice. Thank you. Um, good manager, I, um, we have a question on chat um, by, I think, Janava Mataji. Hare Krishna, thank you, Guru Maharaj. It is nice to chant. Is it possible to chant Hare Krishna mantra in the mind also when we are listening lectures or bhajan, or is it an offense? Well, if you're listening to lectures and bhajans, um, you're hearing the sound vibration also externally. If you're if it's if it's chanting in your mind and it's going on naturally, fine, but don't try to force that if it's happening naturally. Better if you focus on hearing what you're in the bhajans and the lectures nicely. But if you if it's chanting, if it's going on in your mind naturally, hey, that's fine. There is an example of um, one great uh, spiritual uh, person. He was on the platform of uh, love of God, almost on the platform of Prema. He was on Baba platform. And he would, was known for his very interesting and enlightening spiritual talks on many intricate philosophical topics. And so he, he had developed a reputation and he was traveling and giving classes and talks everywhere. So one time when he was giving a class outside, uh, one very elevated lady, her name was Krishna Priya. She came to sit into his lecture and she sat there towards the very back part and she was chanting Hare Krishna. This uh, person who was giving the lecture, he was somewhat uh, unhappy that she had come to his lecture. Now she was chanting Hare Krishna at the same time. And so he brought, he, he actually started to chastise her amongst everyone. She remained quiet. She didn't say anything. After his chastisement, uh, not long after that, he fell down for her. She, she was also a very elevated personality. And, um, but she could not stop chanting Hare Krishna. And that was her situation. Her, she had become so adept at chanting Hare Krishna that for her to stop chanting was not possible. She was chanting 24 hours a day. And so he offended her. Uh, so, but she could come to his lecture, chant, and at the same time, listen to the lecture. So um, that's a very elevated stage. <laughs> if it happens naturally, then fine. But don't try to force that in order to make some kind of impression. She's saying, thank you, Guru Maharaj. It is not my case. Okay. okay. And devotees, any questions or comments? Yes, Sri Devi Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you, Srimati. Please express my humble obeisances, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your divine lotus feet. On this question of uh, remembering Krishna, that all the rules and regulations ultimately is for remembering Krishna, I'm just going to be a little, you know, I mean, maybe play the devil's advocate here. 
I'm saying, I'm remembering Krishna all the time. I'm going out to buy boga. I'm coming back. I'm cooking the uh, boga. I'm offering it to Krishna. I'm doing deity worship. Then I'm running out to sell books. Then I'm coming back. Then I'm doing kirtan. I'm doing this all the time because I'm only remembering Krishna. But I have no time to sit down with japa beads and chant Hare Krishna. But I'm remembering Krishna all the time. So why are you asking me to chant 16 rounds? Well... What is the foundation for all activities in devotional service? I'll ask you that question. Remembering Krishna and serving Krishna and pleasing Krishna. Yeah, but there is also a fundamental principle that it directs one in that in, in everything we do. What is that? Following the instructions of the Lord. Yeah, as given by the spiritual master. So there, so spiritual master says, say, chant 16 rounds every day. So even in this purport here, you see Prabhupada said, that is my most essential instruction. So we can't somehow or other think that, um, well, I've already got it. I'm remembering Krishna. I don't need to chant 16 rounds. No, you have to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was an example of that himself. He was not only was he chanting, he was chanting on beads every day. And just do you think the Supreme Personality of Godhead has to chant on beads? <laughs> but he was to show the example that this is what he's asking everyone to do. And he's showing by example in his, in his Leela as playing the role of, of the pure devotee. So you can't skirt the instructions of the spiritual master and expect to get, and then, then I would also question are you really remembering Krishna throughout the day with all these activities? I would question that. So the instructions of the spiritual master are the foremost principle in devotional service. So you'll see in that purport, Prabhupada explains that these principles, according to the verse, are the essence of the whole process to always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. But then in describing it in detail, he ends by saying, my most essential instruction is to chant 16 rounds every day. So he includes that in that discussion just to under, to give a point that you have to chant every day on beads not just chant but on beads you have to count even the goswamis of vrindavan if you sad goswami astaka one of the prayers is sankhya purna sankhya sankhya means to count I forget which particular. See if you can find that that verse, uh, Srimati. It's the Sad Goswami Astakam. Um, I think it's verse number four in the Sad Goswami Astakam. It's by Srinivas Acharya. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sankipunam. Here's an example of how the, you know, where is it? This is number six. Sankhya Purna Nama Ganad Nanati Bhi Kala Vasadha Kritam Didrahara Vihara Kala Vidito Chantanya Dino Chagyo Vaha Krishna Gudan Svitam Madhuri Mananendana Samohito one day Rupa Sanat no Rabu Yago, Sri Jiva Gopala Go. So go to the translation for number six. 
Yeah. I offer my respectful obeisances to the six Goswami, namely Sri Rup Sunatan, Sri Rup Sunatan Bhatta Ganashi Jiva Gopal Bhatta Das Raghuna, who engage in chanting the holy names and bowing down in a scheduled measurement. There you go. In this way, they utilize their valuable time in executing devotional activities. Scheduled measurement. In other words, they were. It was scheduled and it was measured. They were counting. Sankhya means to count. This verse is illustrated that even the six Goswamis would count their uh, rounds. And they would also count how many times they paid obeisances. Um, they did other numerical vows. So to take numerical vows is a way to um, stay fixed in one's execution of devotional service. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's one example, which is a very powerful example. Mm -hmm. But I heard excuses like this, Guru Maharaj, and I'm just asking because I want to know how to answer. Um, Krishna is not a numbers person. He knows my heart. He knows how much love I have for him. I'm trying to do my best. So to 16 rounds, Krishna understands. He, he's a very loving and very kind. And um, he's not a numbers person. He sees my heart. Okay, go ahead. Continue on the way you're going. Pretty soon you'll get a job. <laughs> <laughs> she has three jobs by the way this lady who was talking like this she says she has to work very hard because she has to see her children to college they have so many needs she has to provide for them etc etc mm, good luck <laughs> we wish you well Yeah, you're not going to, don't try to convince anybody like that. Just tell them, yeah, whenever you get a chance, chant. She's initiated? Yes, she's initiated, Guru Maharaj. She's a disciple of Niranjan Swami. Well, the point is that she has to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. And without doing that, unless her spiritual master has given her a concessionary uh, position, which I doubt it, but usually we allow people, even if they're below the standard, uh, to continue in their devotional service with the hope that they will gradually come back to the standard. So 16 rounds every day on beads. Not just 16 rounds in my mind. I need to. So when we say there's 16 rounds on the beads without fail every day, we are simply repeating what Srila Prabhupada said. And we are not fanatical or, you know, just being hardcore or this or that. We are just simply following what Prabhupada said, right? Well, he emphasized that statement. He said that he's made that statement over and over again. My most important instruction to my disciples is to chant every day 16 rounds on beads without fail. He's made it here in this purport, and he said it many times in his lectures. So what else do we need? <laughs> if, you can't, if you haven't got it yet, you'll never get it. It's the, the idea is people can't do it, so they make some excuse. That's the basic thing. If you love someone, you do what they say. <laughs> Krishna 
if someone in say, say, I love this person and this person's telling me what to do, then by following that, you're showing your love for that person. This idea of love is not some sentiment or some emotion. It's a principle of please to, to serve in a pleasing way. That is love. Mm -hmm. I'm really concerned because I know many, many, many initiated devotees who don't chant their 16 rounds every day, Guru Maharaj. How we can help them? Be the example. When you give your classes, speak about it. Going around talking to each and every devotee doesn't really work. People, if they come to you, then you can discuss it with them or emphasize that but generally be an example and at the same time when you get the opportunity to speak in a forum or in a class type setting you make these points and hopefully people will hear and get a, and get more serious about okay thank you guru maharaj my humble obeisances hmm. You know, Prabhupada, who was that particular cartoon that Prabhupada used to mimic? It was in a newspaper. There's an old man and an old lady sitting together, and the old lady is saying to the man, chat, 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 and he's responding, can't, can't, can't. He said, this is, this is the situation. We're asking everyone to chat, 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 and they're saying, can't, can't, can't. I know some really wonderful devotees who, when I think of them, it breaks my heart that, you know, they've given up their chanting because they find it too difficult. When I think of Lord Brahma meditating for 1,000 celestial years to attain self-realization, when I think of Tulsi Devi, how she performed austerities for 100,000 years to gain Lord Narayan, and then you compare that to Lord Chaitanya's program, chant 16 rounds and follow four regulative principles, and you'll come back to me. It's like, my gosh, we have hit the jackpot over here. What more do you want? How, how much more simple can it get? And even this we cannot do means it's really very, uh, very, very unfortunate situation, Guru Maharaj. Well, Prabhupada said, if you can't chant 16 rounds, you're in a disease condition. Mm. In other words, the material disease has grabbed you. <laughs> so you have, uh, just like there was one, one aspiring disciple she had a new baby so she was taking care of the baby the baby requires 24 hours a day for those who are mothers they, they they know that and so she was saying you know i can't chant my 16 rounds so, but she wanted to chant but she she's just saying i don't have any time i'm have to be with the baby all the time so i gave her the formula which Prabhupada had given to us also for those who are in that situation where uh, for whatever reason they can't do it. And the formula is really easy. He said, four times a day you chant four rounds. So in other words, you get up in the morning, you chant four rounds. So maybe uh just before breakfast or I'd, maybe even right after breakfast you chant four more rounds so before lunch or just right after lunch you chant four more rounds and then just before you take rest you chant four more rounds you can divide your day up um, into six hour periods and you can find 
a half hour, maybe a half hour, a little bit more, four times a day to chant four rounds. Now, and I gave her that formula and she followed it and it worked for her. Although she still had this brand new baby, she was able to find when the baby was sleeping, you know, four times where she could uh, chant four, uh, four rounds. And because of that, now she's chanting 16 hours. So if you have a desire, mm -hmm. if you have a desire, the formula will come. Something practical will, will appear in your life to make it happen. Like I want to chant, I want to chant more than 16 rounds. So what I do, I'll just give you my, I chant 16 rounds before I do anything in the morning. And that's after that, I chant four more rounds sometime before lunch. And I chant four more rounds after lunch. And then if I have time, I'll chant another four before taking rest. So I try to chant 20, eight rounds. If I can't chant 28, I'll chant 24, something like that. So once I get my 16 rounds done, then I can, I can look at the rest of the day and squeeze in a half hour here, there, and, and other places. And it becomes nice. So I would recommend that chant your 16 rounds early. Uh, you know, it might be a little hard, like this morning I was tired. So if I tried to chant my 16 rounds this morning in a sitting position, I wasn't able to do it. So I had to get up and walk around and put a little uh, energy into my chanting, a lot more than I normally do. And then I somehow or other got out of my sleepy condition and I was able to finish my runs much easier, nicely. So uh, you have to see how, what works for you. When we get older, the body, you know, the, you get tired more, sometimes you get tired or the living conditions are not so, it's either too cold in the room or it's too hot in the room, <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> or there's some noise coming somewhere from, you, you can't get away from it. You have to learn how to adjust. But you, if you keep the principle, chanting is the most important thing. And, I'll, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure I chant my rounds nicely. Okay, Sri Devi. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I really, you know, resonate with everything you have said, and I really do want to help people so much. You know, my fervent desire is to help people come to the come to the joy of Krishna consciousness by just following the program. I don't know, maybe I'm too fanatical or too strict or something. I don't know, maybe I'm. But uh, simply by following your instructions, I've, I've definitely reaped the benefits of doing that. Yeah, just just remain fanatical. It's good. <laughs> okay, Guru Maharaj, with your blessings. Fanaticism for the right thing is good. <laughs> Uh, Mataji, yeah, you want yeah. to go ask the question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to Guru and Gauranga. So Maharaj, I, I uh, wanted to ask, in the initial time when I started my uh, Japa round, I started with three rounds and then I literally forced myself can I, am I audible, Maharaj? Hmm? 
Yes, um, there's there's a sound that's kind of coming in along with your speech that's making it a little. Um, what we say there's a little vibration with it, so it makes me it makes it hard for here me to understand the words. But continue. I'm getting it, but it's a little um, different. Okay. Um. So I, I was just asking in the initial time, uh, I started with three rounds and then I literally forced myself uh, till I, I went up to 16 to 18 rounds for chanting. And uh, then I thought that I, after I uh, reach 16 to 18 rounds of my target, then I'll make it uh, more qualitative rounds. So, Maharaj, is it good to uh, work on, uh, you know, making the making your rounds more qualitative, or should I uh, increase my rounds? Well, if, if, if I missed the best of sixteen. Well, quantity helps to bring about quality because the more you chant, the more you can practice to. But you should not chant quantity in order to finish the numerical value. You should chant quantity in order to increase the quality. That's that's the reason for for increasing. So yeah, uh, key quality is the essence of everything in life. When you do something, the quality of the activity is what brings about the realization and the satisfaction of the activity. So don't don't put quality in a second position for quantity. Do both. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. I think yeah. I should uh, I should then uh, give other time to reading and hearing and all that things after I finish my rounds. That's, a, that's, up to, that's up to you. If you're doing 18 rounds, and uh, that's good. But if you can do, but if you feel like those two extra rounds are forcing you just to fill, fulfill the numerical vow, then better to do 16 nicely. Always think in terms of hearing nicely. That's the idea for ch chanting means to hear. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely it makes sense. I would, uh, even I was feeling that thing that I should rather make uh, my rounds more qualitative at this stage at least. Uh, and reading. <laughs> And reading and hearing lectures, I think that helps more uh, to make your rounds qualitative. Good, yeah, that's what it takes. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Good, thank you. Shamani. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and to your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for such an nectarian class. Um, so my question is, um, um, after, after you chant um, your 16 rounds, is it better to have a like, um, take a vow like that, you know, during the daytime you will uh, do specifically like five or six or ten. So, do you, is it better to have those kind of a make a vow numerical that okay, I'm going to do six round, six extra round every day, or is it better that way, Guru Maharaj? It's good to increase your rounds, but uh, if you're going to jump from sixteen and add six more to twenty-two, that's a little bit of a, a quick. I would say go more gradual. I mean, this is a more practical thing. In other words, add a round or two. Uh, you can add a round every like one month or two months. The thing is, do 16 nicely, and then add another round, 17. And once you get accustomed to do 17, then you can also go to 18. I did that. I went from 17, 
16 to 17 to 18 to 19 to 20. And I went to 21. And then I found 21 was a little bit more. So I went back to 20. I stayed at 20. And I find 20 is good. But now, since this lockdown has come, I find more time available. So now I'm using, I'm using that time for extra rounds. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, it's nice to do extra, but uh, if you're going to make it in the terms of a vow, better to take it step by step and not try to jump too fast to a higher number. Okay. okay, thank you very much. The idea is to go up and not come down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, devotees, any more questions or comments? Good marriage. I think uh, there are no more questions or comments. Anything? Okay. What is the time? Oh, it's a little yeah, after. Uh, we are past one hour. Six oh six. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow is the um, class with the devotees from yeah. Harrisburg. Bhakti no. Bhakti Sangha, uh, Charlotte. Good Char class. Charlotte. Yes. Good marriage. And the topic yeah. is uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, fifth canto, seventeenth chapter. 10 and 11 verses. Okay. 5, 17, 10 and 11 tomorrow at, at, at 10 uh, 12, Yeah, 12, 10 uh, UK time. 12, right. 10 p.m. UK time. Okay, good. So we'll see you all then. Uh, we'll switch a little bit to the fifth canto. Fifth canto is always one of the most interesting of all of the cantos from my perspective. I always find if Canto is loaded with a lot of interesting statements that you that they're very mind catching, they catch the mind. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a nice day. Have a nice morning. Have a nice evening. Wherever you are. Remember Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru.